Okay, that's it. No. Okay, no. Okay, now I said okay, okay, okay. All right, I put up a Randy Rhodes. Uh, I found so I'm finding stuff because this is how I'm finding stuff. My mom uh, took over my room, you know, when I moved out years ago, and I left it as is from like the 80s or, or whenever but I you know I used to come back and crash here because I had a son that would refuse to leave his grandma or gamma you'd say <clears throat> so I had to stay here and then I'd live with girlfriend mainly well there were several but there was two main ones that I lived with during the 80s and 90s Actually, two, yeah, two in the 90s, and that's it. Then I was uh, back at church, and you can't do that no more, buddy. So, <laughs> yeah, this is story time for a bit. I only got 20 minutes left on this card, and then I got to get a new one. So, I'm actually going to a church uh, meeting tonight, Saturday. Not like, well, kind of like this. I'm just going to put on another shirt and uh, jacket. I got sweats on sit in the back I'm there and I'm clean just took a shower so that's the main point everybody else will be you know in suits and ties and all that but I you know it's Saturday night so here we go I'm talking more because YouTube is telling me to so I'm doing that I put up one this is my first actually my third time trying to put up a live show that's not me, and it can only be Randy Rhodes or uh, Motley Crue, because those are the only bootlegs that I have that no one else has, or one other, two other people. So there's one show, I have the Kalamazoo show, actually I have three, but the best one is the Kalamazoo, Michigan, I, I think because of uh, Randy's playing and the... Uh, you can really hear that echo, that delay he had, because it was actually, uh, I'm, from what I understand, Randy had it set to where the guy at the soundboard would activate that so it would get that big slap back you hear. So, I know it's been online for years, but it's the dirty, crappy version that I gave this guy in the 90s the last time I saw the tape I thought I'd lost it forever and I thought I would lost all of them apparently not apparently they're all still at my parents house in my old room where my mom is but see she's got a bunch of all of her you know 30 years of stuff piled there so she's digging through that now she's getting it's like a archaeology thing so now she's hitting my stuff so she found a bunch of my 45s so that's why I was able to show the Motley Crue one the other time on some Facebook thing. Where it's like, is that yours? No, it's somebody else's. Yes, it's mine. So I'll do another live YouTube thing because this card stuff is too much money and too much time. So I'm going to do a thing maybe tonight or tomorrow night uh, showing you the 45s that she found. Because, of course, one of them was that. There's a couple local bands that would play with us, and they'd give us 45s, like a something lost, not lost boy. Anyways, they played with us a few times, uh, Fatal Attraction, or was it Stiletto? I don't know. It could have been any, or Trick or Trunk, Trick or Treat. <laughs> so that's how I'm finding all this stuff. So I got the Kalamazoo one. It's a tape. The tape, 
I got 19... I thought I got it in 82, but I realized I wasn't dating my wife in 1980, my first wife in 82. We dated in 83, and it was her friend whose dad was the sound guy. And it was this kid she went to school with. And she's like, you know, I'm dating Michael Skews. He's, you know, I was the rocker in Burbank that most people knew. Actually, most people called me uh, Motley Skew. Michael Skews. Mo I thought that. <laughs> or Michael Crew, whatever. Because it was a joke, because I'd always have these shirts, you know, on. And they're like, who's this band? And had them a tape. Or I'd say, go buy the album, you know, but most people got tapes, and that circulated through Burbank High. So by the end of 82, everyone had it, especially people in uh, 12th grade, the grade above me. A guy named Ward Gothridge loved Too Fast for Love, so he was giving it out to everybody. He had a, you know, double cassette deck, and I did too, and we'd make a bunch of tapes. So everybody had Motley Crue tapes. By the end, I, by the end, of 80, or when I graduated in 83, it was, uh, what, like June 83, I started dating my wife a few months later, so that's, so it had to, it's, it was sometime in the first few months we dated, so it was in 83 I actually got the tape, but the tape is from 82, the master, so the guy would take the tape, he'd have a quarter inch, stereo tape that's why there's this big gap in the flip you can't just flip the cassette and put it in because he wasn't taping cassette he was using a quarter inch tape stereo quarter inch and you'd have to put another one on so during right after uh, the solo in i don't know it stops and then it picks up in the beginning of uh no bone movies which was the thing, everybody used to say, dude, man, I like to bone that J.O., bone, bone, bone movies. He doesn't, no bone movies means he doesn't want to see any porno. It's enough, no porno, no bone movies tonight. That's what it means. I'm sure you all know that. But that was a big saying around Burbank. I remember that. So, anyways, I've got, I've, I put it up and they took it, they nailed it. And I'm like, why are they nailing it? Everybody else can put theirs friggin' thing up. Is it the title? Is it the... No, it was the intro. I put too much of Diary of a Madman on. So I just... I thought I chopped the whole thing off, but I left like three seconds of the intro in. So you could get the whole, you know, opening. And it sounds good. It sounds like a really good recording. And then when that delay kicks in you have to have headphones on because it's like what the hell it sounds un 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 friggin believable now you know why I do my little delay thing because that's the friggin you know that's the friggin tape I always listen to so that's the Randy bootleg that I always got all my little things from anyways it's up there it's called Randy Rhodes Soundboard 1982 Live or Live 1982. Randy Rhodes Soundboard, Kalamazoo, Michigan, Live 1982. Just look for it. My name, YouTube, Michael Skews. Go to my channel, subscribe, Michael Skews, my YouTube channel, subscribe to it, and watch it. Randy Rhodes, Kalamazoo, Michigan, Soundboard, Kalamazoo, Michigan. Just look for it. Mine. It's the best copy you're ever going to find. It's amazing. I had a listening party yesterday because I actually put it up on Facebook. And I had, a, you know, within minutes, hundreds of people were watching or listening together and commenting. I thought that was pretty cool. It was, you know, so having a listening party. That was actually a, it's actually a pretty cool idea. I'm going to do that again. Um, but it's up on YouTube now. So go listen to it now, and you're going to have your, but put it on, put on headphones. Don't listen with a phone. Don't listen on a, you go buy some flipping headphones or put it through a stereo or some kind of sound system at least. 
because you need it. Otherwise, you're not going to hear it. Because there's parts, like just before uh, Revelation Mother Earth, you can hear Randy talking to, I think, Tommy. Because it's not very loud, so if he was talking to Tommy, saying something about the intro, you can it's picked up by the mics the, for the instrument. So, And you can't hear that unless you have headphones on. That's how clear this friggin' recording is. It's only the second, so it's the master, he made his copy, and I got the copy from his, that copy. That's two generations, and now it's been digitized, and I can't do it again because the tape was so old, it had to be baked. So you have to bake it, literally, the tape, so it'll hold together, and then you do the run, and the tape is pretty much history. You've got to get it on that first pass. So I said, you know, I've got to bake it, bake it. And it's baked. So that means they cook it. They put it up to 190-something degrees. I can't remember. I used to have to do it when I was in, still working in uh, post-production. But that's what you do with old audio tapes. You bake them, and then sometimes you have to put this slick crap on it, which is even worse because that just that screws up the head and you gotta clean it. Okay, so I'm talking too much.